people of Festival 2018, welcome back to Q's Couch Conversations. And today we're on episode five. I remind you quickly that we were speaking to Mamela Nyamza in the previous episode, who came in and talked about her life, her work. Uh, she's the featured artist for 2018, and we thought it'd be lovely just to go through her productions. She had three that she put on, Hatched, Black Privilege, and Pumalanga. But today we're switching it up, we're bringing you some of the funny. You guys already know how much I stand, how much I support and love comedy. And who else should be on this couch than the very funny Tats Gonzo. Yeah. Welcome to the show. How are you feeling today? Good. Tired a little bit, but mm -hmm. good. Okay. So, I know this might be an annoying question. You get asked it quite a bit. Then don't ask it. No, we have to, because people don't know. Those who haven't had the chance to chart your journey from the beginning don't know how you broke into comedy. Tell us about that. Um, it was a competition uh, called So You Think You're Funny on SABC1. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was, had, a, I had a gap year where I was doing a whole lot of things in Joburg, and I saw the competition. I'd never done comedy before, and uh, I remember I went to the queue to sign up, and there were a whole lot of character people, like people in funny clothes and like hats and nose, almost like uh, physical theatre people, mm. and I was like. I don't know what I'm going to do because I've never done comedy, but these people seem like they have a thing. So I remember I signed up and then they said I can come back in like three hours. So I went home and I was trying to think how to fit in. So I picked up my guitar and I thought it was the most original idea. So I went in there with a the guitar and uh, I made it through to the next round. And uh, I think that's, that's probably how it started. Okay. Just took a chance, yeah. Just took a chance. Now, I know you guys will remember him from um, South Africa's Got Talent. Uh, he was a, a standout, right, from that moment. And or then we could already tell that you, you've got a very special way of connecting with the audience, first of all, but also your improv is top-notch. Talk us through that process. No, really, because I've been watching you Thanks. almost every night during a festival in your own show. Tats Gonzo is privileged, and you are hosting quite a bit on The Last Laugh, yeah. uh, presented by Stuart Taylor, another very brilliant comedian. So now, how do you, how do you, how does the, what is the process like? How do you put your acts, your shows together? Because it all seems so natural, so mm. seamless, and, and that's not human or normal. So uh, tell us the secret. No, you know what, that took, that took a long time to, it's not even master, it's, if I have to be simple about it, it's just being honest. Right. Um, I think as a stand-up, eventually, when you're just honest with the moment, uh, that's mm. what happens. Uh, it's difficult because I can write jokes, or people write jokes and they go up on stage and they say the thing that they prepared. And that's fine, and it's funny. But there's an, another level is when you realize every audience group of people is different. Mm. And um, think of it like a date. Like when two people get together, I have a life and information and things I've experienced and things I could say. And you have the same thing. But we have to wait f for the right time to say the thing when the moment presents itself. So. On stage, it's the same thing. It's like, I have jokes for you guys. I can say this stuff, but find out who the audience is, you know, what the vibe is, and then kind of, once you lock in, it's a much better show when you lock in a customized comedy experience as opposed to something that's already prepared. Yeah. But like I say, that's scary because I don't know who's going to be in front of me. So it's very difficult to prepare. Yeah. Honesty. It's difficult to prepare being open and just going with it. So are you saying then that it's a, it's more of mastery of, of flow, knowing how to, to gauge a thing, read a thing quickly and then flow with that. Absolutely. All right. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, Utats, his uh, solo act this year is Tats Gonzo's Privileged, right? Brilliant. Uh, I was in pain, literally, from all the laughter. Aww. So for those who haven't seen it and would love to still catch it, just give us a bit of a blurb. What are you exploring, uh, exposing in Tats and Gonzo is privileged? Um, I'm exposing myself, actually. And uh, in turn, hoping that people 
identify. Because uh, what I've realized is we say we, like as people, we say we believe many things until those things are challenged. And uh, I was, like the show is about me having my beliefs tested in terms of uh, what I think I am good at, what I think I, like all my righteous beliefs, for lack of a better word, the way I see people, for example. Like the, the show pretty much came about when uh, my son, three-year-old son, uh, kissed a homeless guy. And that shook my world upside down because... He's homeless. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. He's homeless. They were, like, you know what I mean? It, it, I, I used to believe I like people, see people, you know, in a... In a doesn't matter what a person has. Um, and it doesn't matter who a person is, you treat them the same until they're homeless and kiss your son, and then you're like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so it was like, I explore that. Mm. Um, my, my experience of uh, cross-cultural relationships and the challenges that brings, the things it brings up in me. Mm. Um, so the, the show is pretty much a, a confession. Right. And uh, I'm, I find that a lot, of, a lot of people relate to it because... I say some pretty deep down, everybody has things. And uh, it's actually therapeutic for me and hopefully for the audience and funny. Yeah. yeah. Funny, definitely therapeutic. Uh, we'd have to sort of sit and think about that one a bit because once it's therapeutic, it then also becomes a bit confrontational, even internally. Yeah. And that can be uncomfortable, but uncomfortable is good because it Absolutely. means work is, has to be done, right? Um, so what are some of the challenges you face personally as a comic that us watching, loving, supporting might not be privy to? Because you're big, you're verified on Twitter, right? The, the millennials would think that, that you've made it. Ah. But what don't we know about the, the daily, weekly, monthly struggles and challenges that you're having to overcome or the, the boundaries you're having to break? Yeah. I think it's the, it's the unknown. Like, um, as a stand-up, Every, every joke that I come up with comes from a serious place. Like, if you listen to my comedy, I don't, I don't find things funny. It's almost like I don't find things funny. I'm, I make things funny. Right. So I've stopped, like, in the beginning it was, what can I write that will make these people laugh? What, what's funny? What's funny? What's funny? And, if, and that's tiring because... It's a constant trying to find things outside. But I write about things that I feel. Because things might not always be funny outside, but I'm always feeling. So mining that is, is, is probably the hardest part. It's, uh, what do I feel about this? But, yeah, but this is not funny. Then the work begins. How do I make it funny? Mm. You know, if I'm, if I'm upset about whatever, the petrol price going up or my, school, my son's school fees or not being able to uh, pay rent, whatever the hell, whatever the thing is. All those things aren't funny, but it's how do I deal with it mm -hmm. and sharpen it and go up on stage and share it in a funny way. That's, that is challenging because that is a constant 24-7 introspection, mm -hmm. self-awareness, thing that most people, I guess I was going to say luxury, but don't have the time to do. Yeah. But uh, that's the work that, that, that goes into it. It's, it's a lot of work being self-aware, which is why for me, like, nobody investigates my work more than me. Sure. There's nobody, there's no audience member who can tell me about my show. Mm. They can give, give me a blind spot maybe or help me here and there, but in terms of Questions and angles, I, it's my job to know yeah. what this joke is going to hit and how it's going to affect. And then what am I going to say when it does this? What am I going to say when it does this? What if they don't laugh? That's, that's my job. Yeah. And so it seems easy, but it's a lot of work. You know, if I say this, how will 
the young people feel? How will the old people feel? How will the white people feel? Mm. How will this race or this culture or this... That's my, the job of a comedian. And then by the time I'm on stage and I'm, it seems like I'm flowing, yeah, yeah. it's because I've done the work and made the mistakes mm -hmm. and learned from the mistakes. So that's um, what people won't see. And I think the, one of the biggest things probably today is just because I do all that work, it doesn't guarantee that I'm going to be successful. Mm. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that I, I'm going to get money. It doesn't mean that I'm going to get booked. It doesn't mean that I'm going to get liked. So comedy, if you're doing it to get stuff, it, it's problematic. Yeah. Yeah. At this point for me, comedy is, it's just my way of learning about myself in the world. Sure. It just happens to be what I do for a living. Okay. Now talk us through if you have strategies or techniques, because I watch you and you're very animated, right? You almost, there's, there's a dramatic element because you're on chairs, you're on tables, you're walking between mm. the audience, uh, you're all over the stage, you're pulling down your pants. Are those oh, things that the happen? The one time. The one time. <laughs> Are those things that happen on the spot or is there a little bit of strategy? Tonight I want to make sure with you, I, I get close enough, so I'm going to touch hands, I'm going to step on a chair, mm. I might, you know, get a, try, what, what, what are some of the, the techniques that are pre-determined uh, or pre-planned? Um, it's not techniques. It's more, it's more the energy I, wanna, I want us to experience. All right. So like, yeah, last night when I got on the chair, there was no reason I got up on the chair. It was just because I was literally, I went on to introduce someone. But I just wanted people to, it's almost like when you talk to someone, if you're always talking in the same tone, if this interview was me just talking like this about comedy and I didn't switch it up and uh, it drones on, mm. it's almost it's the same thing with performance. People get comfortable and you have to like remind them that, hey, we're still at a show. So I like, I like to give people an experience. And um, sometimes getting up on a chair, people go, this guy. He's... And that's what I like especially if I'm hosting. Mm. So when I, when I do all those things, it's just to, to give them a, an experience. Um, it's not predetermined how that will happen. So again, I have to tap into the honesty of the moment. Yeah. Um, and and I, I find it works because people go, that was funny, that was a comedy show, but that crazy thing happened or that person said this or, you know. And that's what keeps it interesting, for me at least. Okay, I'm going to tell you about a potentially controversial a notion that I have after reviewing a few comedy shows, not, ju not just this year, but mm. in my previous Q um, uh, reporting. I, have, I think I've gotten to the point where I'm discerning for myself that there's a, there's a two-way thing here. For, in my view, for comedians, it's either you're a comedian and you're funny, and that's easy but then there are comedians who are talented. Completely different ball game, right? Mm -hmm. So to be funny is just that you tell the joke, you get the lines, punchline, boom, boom, bam, done, giggles. But they are talented comedians. And I'm gonna name drop, right? From this series, what I've watched, I can isolate Luis Ogola, obviously. Talented, Brilliant. right? I wasn't aware Ulrisa Madinga is that damn good. Brilliant. Um, Robbie Collins, such a joy, such a good human being, but also talented. Very good. And then we have you, talented, which explains why he's on the couch. What do you make of that notion? Is it harsh? Is it too black and white? No, it's, it's, it's the work. You've literally named three of the hardest working comics at this festival, hands down. Like, those guys are talented, yes, but they work hard. Mm. Like, and by work hard, I mean out every night, trying the same jokes, how to do it better. Every single night, those guys put in the work, and it shows. Mm. Um, I don't, at this point, if I see a talented comedian, I don't get excited. Sure. I wait, and I watch, because that will tell me if this person's going to last or not. And that's the difference. People want to do stand-up, and it's getting more popular now. And people see the, the thing, and they go, ooh, I can do that. For me, I don't get excited until 
I see you still doing it a year in, and then two years in, and then three years in. Lois has been doing comedy, we were talking yesterday, for 17 years. I've been doing it for 10. Uh, so it's like, that's a long time to be doing one thing. And people like to ask me, what do I do for a living? I say, I'm a comedian. And they go, and what else? I'm like, no, that's it, I'm a, sta a stand-up comic. Because <sighs> distraction, comedy is ruthless. You can't be great if, you, if you're literally not just doing it. Mm. Can I bite on that? Yes. Because I have another notion about greatness, right? And we have to tweak it now to apply it to the art form of comedy, but I believe there has to be some, some grain, some texture in your life story. I'm not saying it has to be pain and trauma and suffering right through, but there has to be a certain thing you've gone through. You, have, you must know life, man. Absolutely. And that's what, to me, because I can relate to my own life journey, that's what makes that top four that I just isolated great comics because there's texture in life story, in struggle, mm. in the highs and the lows, in the getting to this point and the stuff we haven't seen and yeah. we don't know about. Yeah. Is that a fair assessment of greatness? In well, yeah. So, I, I, Self-awareness, I think, is the biggest thing because you can go through, th people go through things and they don't know why or they, they experience things and they don't deal with them uh, in, a, in an introspective way. Mm. So it's, you can experience something and it's, this person broke my heart or my mom disappointed me and, and it's all there. Great comedy is, and this is what it did to me. Yeah. And this is how I responded and this is how I struggled or how I got through it. So if your sentence is when you're working it out, don't start with I, then you're not focused. Like... How do I explain this? My son kissed a homeless person. If my joke was about my son and the guy, and I'm talking about homeless people and babies, it's still over there. Mm. The experience that I experienced and the, and the co concern and the struggle and the, 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 the tension that happened was me. So it was how did I feel about the situation? Um, I have a joke about going to an all-white beach in, in, in Cape Town with an Afrikaans friend of mine. If the joke was all about Afrikaans people and beaches, it's, 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 too removed. it's too removed. It was how did I feel when I was walking through that beach and what I saw. Now all of a sudden I'm taking people through a journey through my eyes. And that's, that's what I mean by self-awareness. Uh, and again, that's not a thing people do. Uh, because being self-aware requires a constant, how do I feel about what just happened? Mm. And um, yeah, man, it's just difficult doing that 24-7. Tiring, exhausting. Tiring, yeah. Um, as we approach the end, I've just got two more questions for you. The first is something I've always wondered. Né? You're talking about life experience, the reflection, the introspection, né? and then you get on stage and you, you express that. Yeah. I've always wondered how much of those crazy stories are real. So is spice, just how much spice are you adding to things just to land a joke? Or let's say it's not working, and then you think, okay, right. cool, Raja, just to make sure this thing yes. is delivered. It's definitely, all the jokes are definitely based on something true. Okay. Um, and sometimes you add the spice for comedic effect. But what I find with audiences, people don't, li people don't mind if you lie to them, but you have to lie to them well. It's like with purpose, I suppose. Yeah. To be a point to the lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the point to the lie is, is predominantly for laughter. It's almost like, but if you do it well, they don't mind. It's like watching uh, a man fly in a movie. It's like if you have CG and you have a soundtrack and the guy's dressed in a cape, we're like, yeah, we, we can buy this. But if you watch like a Nigerian produced low budget and now <laughs> someone is holding someone and you can see hands and <laughs> then it's like, no man, people don't fly. look at this nonsense. So it's like, if you do it well, people will be like, we get it. Mm. We, we understand, we're in your world. And we're not it's almost like, yes, it's like hypnotizing someone. That by the time you finish the joke, they're like, this guy, this guy, that really happened. All right. Yeah. And my last question to you, we know that you are a 2017 Ovation Award winner 
And personally, I believe that uh, that's an award you should get for 2018 as well. Mm. But what does, what does that mean for you? Winning the award last year and the potential of receiving another. Mm. For, co- for comedians, because we know in drama, in theatre, in physical theatre, in music, that's quite a thing, right? Yeah. For, for comedy, do you guys take that award seriously? Um, yeah, it's weird. Stand-up, no. Because being a stand-up comedy comedian is also... It's anti-establishment by nature. It's like we we don't we can't buy into the things the world buys into, sure. and still be a commentator mm. on the things that the world is into. We have to almost be removed in order to see as much of the thing as possible. So that 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 means in life. That means what the general populace believes. That means the trends. We can't be a part of that stuff. Because then we're not, we not uh, as fully aware as we can be. Mm. So, yeah, th- that's a tough one. It's nice to get it, and it's nice to have. But for me personally, that can't be. I can't write shows so that I can get these things. If I if I'm honest with myself and I go according to everything I've said on this interview in terms of introspection and realness and. Uh, delivering a product that matches an energy, and I do all those things, then the world recognizes what I'm doing. And then, I, and then by the time I take my eyes off my work, I go, oh, I'm being recognized. Mm. As opposed to me going, I want to win this, and I want to win this. How do I, mm. what's the science in getting this and this? And then, and then my work is not influenced, because I'm constantly going, am I hitting those marks? Is that reviewer coming? Okay, so I need to change this, this job, that's a much more distracted approach. Yeah. Um, but if you're honest with your work and you're doing your work and you're pursuing excellence, there's no way the world doesn't recognize excellence. Mr. Ngonza, thank you so much for joining us. Thank it's you very much for having me. Pleasure. I enjoyed it. Um, guys, I hope that gave you a bit of insight into the crazy man who's not that crazy. Um, or rather, a, calcul- <laughs> <laughs> a calculated crazy. Um, lovely guy. Please, if you if you do get a chance, you have to squeeze in at least uh, uh, Tatsun Kondo is privileged if you can't make it to the last laugh. Um, these are running till the end of the festival, so with two days left, guys, this thing is not over. The amazing keeps on happening, and we hope that we've given you a bit of a bit of color, texture, nuance to each person that sat with us on this couch. Thank you so much for joining me, and one more episode left. I will not ruin it for you. It's a surprise. But I will hint, he sings, it's got something to do with Soweto, and, and yeah, I'll keep tuned. Follow Q uh, Media Online, all the things, like them, watch them, we've reviewed Utat's glowing reviews, go read. And, and yeah, stay connected. Go read. Go read. Go read, children. Go read, children. <laughs> That's it from Anima Mac Brown, your favorite host. I'll catch you on the last episode. Peace out.